Are you ready to join me in a journey throughout STEAM? Well, hop on! And join me on this cool trip throughout science and technology and engineering and arts and math too. Come with me. In today's video, we're going to make a quick stop in technology because I'll share with you some strategies and tricks that will help you use your device in a more effective way. So let's go. Hi, before we start, you must know that you need to make sure that you have the most recent iOS update. Make sure that you have updated. Once the update has been downloaded, make sure to install it. Have in mind that this update might take several minutes. Great! Now that your software is updated, I'll show you the first trick. If you want to see all the apps that you have opened, you can double click on the home buttons and you will see all the apps that you have opened. But if you're in one of the apps, you can pinch in and pinch out so you can get out of it and touch the app to zoom in. You can close the apps by sliding them up. The second trick that I want to give you is the split screen feature. In here, you need to make sure to set up all the apps that you want to use at the bottom of the dock. If you want to use Google Classroom and Google Slides at the same time, make sure that you have opened them previously. So once you have opened the first app, you slide up the dock, you long press, oh sorry, it's not this one, you long press on the other app and then just slide it up. You slide up like this and you will see it will open on a new window. Now, imagine that your teacher has asked you to write down an article about COVID. Well, uh, you can easily interact with another Chrome, with your Chrome browser or Safari and drag it to the side. And you can use the drag and drop feature. That way you don't have to tap on the picture and then save as picture. You leave your finger on and you have the option of save image, right? Or copy, copy image. But that takes too long. Nowadays, you can just select the picture and drag it. And once the green cross is there, you can let it go on the place where you want to. Don't forget that it's important that you quote or put citations of pictures and text. Now, another feature that the iPad has added to it is the long pressing shortcuts. This means that if you leave your finger over an app, you will have a menu, a small menu, and that will give you more actions. For example, here, you can share or edit. You can search, upload pictures, stickers, and more. Each app has its own uh, action settings. Also, this long pressing option, it's very helpful when using the control center. For example, from all the tools that you have here, you can just open, long press on them and get another menu with more options of it. Now, imagine that for this school year, you want to have all your apps organized. That can be very helpful. Therefore, moving app by app can be very, very hard and it can take you a long time. So I'm going to share you a strategy for the long press. Choose the app that you want to move and then touch the other apps that you want to move along with the app. You can now group them and move them to a corresponding folder. Voila! 
Your teacher has asked you to research about a specific topic and to illustrate your document with a picture. Well, when placing a picture, you can use the text wrapping tool here to wrap the picture with text. That way, you can make a better looking document. Another trick is, when going throughout your text, I'm going to show you how you can make a keyboard a trackpad. If you hold your keyboard with your two fingers here, you will notice that the letters have disappeared. But you will notice that you can move the cursor around. If you pre long press your keyboard, you will notice that it becomes a trackpad, allowing you to move your cursor anywhere on your document. Another trick for the keyboard is the symbols. You might know this one already, but you will notice that each letter has a number or a symbol above. If you want to insert these ones, you don't have to go to the keyboard of the numbers and symbols. You can just slide down the letters and they will appear. Another trick related to the keyboard is the floating keyboard. To do so, just use two fingers to swipe your keyboard in and you will notice that now it's a floating keyboard and you can move it around whatever you want. You can swipe out and have it back to normal. Now, imagine your teacher has asked you to attach evidence of a specific work, but you don't actually know how to do it. Well, you can do it by taking a screenshot. And how to do that? Hold the on and off button on the top of your iPad and the home button. And make sure to press them at the same time. One, two, three. And voila! You have your screenshot and now you are able to upload it to Google Classroom. Sometimes our devices store a lot of pictures and we don't even know. Therefore, here's a trick to make a quick cleanup of your media files and pictures. Instead of selecting one by one, you can slide your finger and make a quick selection of your pictures. That way, you can either trash them or you can move them to a specific album. To undo the selection, just tap on Cancel. Now, imagine your teacher has requested you to scan a QR code. To do so, it's easy peasy lemon squeezy. Your tap on the camera and then scan the code. You will notice that there will be a link coming up so you can open if you notice that your camera is not working, you can go back to settings, tap on camera, and make sure that the option of scan your code is on. So far, these are some of the top 10 tricks that will allow you to have a better performance on your iPad. Make sure to have your iPad organized so you can easily find all your tools. Bye-bye. Whew, that was a long trip, right? Well, I hope all this information is useful for you and that you can use in a more effective way all your devices. Don't forget to answer the Google form that is here in STEAM class. Bye-bye, see you next week.